Hi guys, how's it going? My name's Helena. Welcome back to the channel. It feels like so long since I've said that. My exams are over for the winter and the other week I actually got out to photograph M45, the Pleiades, which is one of my favourite winter targets. So I've purchased Pics Insight and in my study breaks I tried to find my way around it as best I could as a complete beginner transferring from Photoshop. This video is by no means a tutorial but it should give you a good idea of how it works while I process my data on M45. My name is Helena and welcome back to my channel, Helena's Astrophotography. Right, so here we are in PixInsight. Now this is roughly two and a half hours of data on M45. Now, as a complete beginner looking at this piece of software, it can be quite daunting and I know it was for me. Uh, again, this is by no means a tutorial. This is just me showing you what I've learned so far. So at the side, we have all of the options that I have individually selected out from the process tab. Now, all of these can be found under all processes. And to be honest, I couldn't find my way around these categories at first. So all I did was I went into all processes and looked for them in alphabetical order. Now, these icons come up automatically when I launch PixInsight. That's because I've created a preset um, so that they come in without me having to individually come into here um, and select them. It's a big time saver for me and I will show how to do that in a future tutorial. I'm thinking of doing a series on this piece of software, actually, as someone needs to go quite in depth to teach things to you. And I'm not even that confident in it yet. So I'm going to try and relate everything back to Photoshop, um, which is something that I know a lot of you are ve very familiar with. Um, so if we go into all processes and we scroll all the way down, we'll find this thing called screen transfer function. Um, and basically, if you think of it as a curves in Photoshop, except it's like a smart curves of Photoshop. So it analyzes the data, the lights and the darks, um, and it takes a rough guess at stretching the image dependent on where the channels are at. So if we just click this nuke button, that is going to send all the data to the software and that has come out nicely. And you can see um, the before and after, you can see that that has really nicely brought out all of that nebulosity. Now you can see um, a lovely gradient around the side because no, Helena did not take flat frames. Don't come at me in the comments. Um, I didn't have time, unfortunately, that day. And um, as a result, I am gonna invest in a flats panel. What we want to do to get rid of the gradients as much as possible without taking flat frames, shh, don't tell anyone I said that, is we're gonna come into processes, um, background modelization, and we're gonna come into dynamic background extraction. Now these dynamic interfaces that you'll find in the process tab cannot be set as a preset. You, that's why you'll see it is not at the side um, with the rest of the icons. So if we just click on the image here, that is gonna create two crosshairs. I'm gonna roughly center them to where I want them to be. And then I'm also going to click on sample generation, click generate, and it has generated some sam samples around the point. Again, to find the lights and the darks of the photo, and that's gonna realize that there is quite a severe case of vignetting around this image. Now, there's not nearly enough here to pick up the gradient surrounding the nebulosity, so I'm gonna change the tolerance to about one. Click generate again, that's looking good. Maybe go about 1.3, generate again. You can see it's starting to fill up the corners now and just find that sweet spot when basically everything is covered and a sample um, has been created for every point. Now, that is looking good. I'm now gonna go around by clicking individually on each of these icons and delete the ones I don't want to be there. This is quite a tedious process, but has to be done for it to work properly. How do you know which ones to delete? Well, if they're on the nebulosity, for a start, you don't want anything near the nebulosity because that is gonna be um, a huge difference in color to the background anyway, and we don't want that subtracted from the image. And you also want to click and delete or move, alternatively, ones that are on stars because that is going to throw um, the white balance off. So I'm just gonna go around and do this now 
probably speed up the video for you so you don't have to watch me clicking on each individual pointer and checking it. Um, but I'll be back in no time at all to show you the next step. Okay, that is looking pretty good to me. The next step you're gonna want to carry out is you're gonna click this tick. And this is basically gonna show you a stretched version um, of what it's gonna be subtracting from the image. So if you see, if you can relate this to the image, you'll see um, that the light point here is where the nebula lies and it gets darker and darker as it goes into the corners. This is what we want to subtract from our photo. So we're gonna go into target image correction, correction, equals subtraction and click the tick. That is going to run through the process and it is now going to subtract this from this to equal your new image which is going to look like this. Now you can see it is looking a lot better, stretching it however it has revealed a lot of things that we did not want to see and we want to cover up. That can however be fixed. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to go into processes, all processes and dynamic crop. Again this was another dynamic interface that I couldn't put in my presets tab. You can't have more than two dynamic interfaces open at the same time either. So I am going to go in and I'm going to crop um, roughly where I want this image to be. I just want to focus on the nebulosity. I'm going to check that off and that is going to crop it nicely. Um, it's also going to get rid of any stacking artifacts. I'm now going to cross that off and a lot of you will have seen me using a thing in Photoshop called, called HLVG which is basically a green noise removal. Now the exact identical equivalent of that in PixInsight is called SCNR and basically set the colour to remove to green or whatever colour is overriding your image um, and drag the little triangle onto your photo and you can see if we do a little before and after up here that that has taken the majority of that green away. Okay so as a beginner I'd be looking at this and I'd be thinking that's not far off a final photo like I'm quite a fan of this um, and there are a lot of other things I could do to it but as a beginner to PixInsight, like especially to someone who has transferred from Photoshop, there is something that will come in very handy and it will be very similar to Photoshop as well. So if we come into histogram transformation, the first thing you do when you come in here is apply this stretch to the photo because it isn't actually applied to the photo at all right now. If you click reset, you'll see it looks much like it was before. And then you click the nuke button again and you'll see that it is back to what we know and love. So all you've got to do to apply this is drag the triangle from the stretch over to the histogram. You'll see the histogram has gone way up. You'll drag the triangle over to the final photograph. That will go white because you've applied um, the screen transfer function and the histogram stretch. All you need to do is click reset on either of them. I'm going to do screen transfer function and that is applied. So no matter how many times you reset this now, that is applied to the image. If you save that now, that is what you would get out rather than a black photo. Now, obviously another thing you can do, especially for Photoshop lovers, this will be very similar to what you normally do, is come into the real time preview option. Now, the real time preview option gives you a preview of what's happening to your photograph before anything has actually been applied. So you want to come over to this RGB slash K tab. You're gonna move um, the histogram up and down dependent on what you like and maybe boost that contrast a little bit. And that is gonna end up looking really nice. Then to apply this, you can just click the square and that has applied um, our initial stretch on the histogram. Now there are obviously a lot more um, you can do to this. You could even stretch a bit more if you want. I actually want to apply SCNR once more because I'm thinking that that's gone a little bit green. That's looking a lot better. Um, there is a lot more you can do. I quite like to come into curves now and again um, and real-time preview option. I would quite like to up the blues. So if we just single out that blue channel, that's like the bi-channel basis in Photoshop, move it up slightly, that's going to make the whole image slightly cooler. Maybe come into this RGB slash K tab, move that up um, and bring the black point down to create some contrast. 
If you think it's oversaturated, you can always come into color saturation um, and boost that down a little bit. But I think this is looking quite good as it is. And I would post that, I would class that as a final photo. I mean, as soon as I did the auto strip, I would class that as a final photo compared to some other things I've done um, in the past in Photoshop. And there you have it, that is M45, the Pleiades. And there you have it, M45. Now that is probably the quickest tutorial of PixInsight you have ever seen on YouTube. And honestly, that's what I was aiming for for my first go because I'm as new to this as you guys that haven't even touched the software are. I love how PixInsight turns a five or six step process in Photoshop to a one click process. You can really get an idea um, for where your data is gonna go um, in the first couple of clicks, which I find is really nice. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. But until then, happy stargazing, stay safe and clear skies.